to show you something I do mainly for larger paintings. I don't often do this for something as small as this piece because it's easy to control my moisture levels and the smoothness of my glazes when a piece is this small. However, I'm, I'm doing it on this small piece because it's easier to show you in a small amount of time through the tutorial exactly how I go about this. So I've got here Daniel Smith transparent watercolor ground and as you can see it is actually sort of a milky white. It's not quite transparent but when it is in a thin glaze it is pretty much transparent. So I take a flat brush and using the clear watercolor ground I am going to very lightly do a layer across the entire upper blue portion of this painting. This is going to fix the blue in place. As long as I don't brush too hard as I'm doing this, I'm not going to move the pigment around at all. And this means that after this dries, after this layer of transparent watercolor dries, I can go back on top of this blue and do subsequent layers without any lifting issues. And so I can get my blues much deeper and richer quickly than I would otherwise be able to if I were to just continue painting glazes normally. Now this also is something I'll do when I'm trying to maintain a very lovely granulated texture like what's happened up here across subsequent layers without ruining them as I do a glaze on top because just like the lifting quality of the blue the granulated texture is something that's going to dissolve and become a smooth wash if you disturb it too frequently or too much with a heavy-handed brush. So once this dries, I'm going to show you that bottle again. Once this dries, then I can go forward with subsequent layers. And so I'm going to leave this. I, I didn't do a very thick layer. It's pretty thin, so it's only going to take about 10 minutes or so to dry. Dry again. And so now I can take more of this blue and this time I'm actually just going to paint directly over everything. I used to sometimes do this quick buildup of intensity um, using a spray fixative as well. Um, some kind of workable fixative which allows you to paint watercolor on top because not all fixatives will let you do that. Some fixatives will um, turn your paper into water repelling surface and then you won't be able to paint anything else onto it. But, um, so, so I would use workable fixative, but even workable fixatives were not really 100% workable despite their name. And so I didn't like the results of that all the time. Sometimes it worked if, it, if you sprayed a light, light layer, but then it made the, um, it didn't, it didn't really fully fix things then. And so that kind of defeated the purpose <laughs> of doing it because if you did it only lightly it would it would only slightly resist um, lifting and, and you would still get some sort of lifting action and so finally I decided that's a waste of time. Um, so I, I do like using the watercolor ground much more for this purpose and by doing this I'm able to get the color intensity up so much quicker than if I were to just paint straight layers what would take 
multiple, multiple layers at a time, or else just really um, going for it with, with intense pigment right off the bat, but then you don't have as much control over where the color goes and, and how smooth your wash is. I didn't like that either. So this watercolor ground is the best solution that I have come to and the best one for my purposes and for how I paint in my style. But those are a few other suggestions if this doesn't work for you. Um, you know, you can either just paint very carefully or you can just go at it right from the start with much more intense color, or you can try the fixative route. I did another layer of the clear watercolor ground, and now that is dry as well as the previous layer. So now I'm going back in with a pointed brush no longer using my big flat brush and I am going to do um, painting in this area much more controlled than with my large general wash earlier. making this blue very deep and rich now. Now the downside of doing either the fixative or the watercolor ground between layers is it's kind of the inverse of the positive side of doing this, right? I'm doing it because I don't want my blue to lift so that I can get my colors very intense and dark. But on the other hand, because I cannot lift any longer, I'm not able to make use of certain lifting techniques. Like, for example, if I wanted to blur the edges of the moon some more into the surroundings, which would be very easy to do had I not sealed everything in with the clear watercolor ground, but now is no longer a possibility. So rather than going via a lifting technique to do that, if I did want to make that white moon blend more seamlessly into the background, I'll have to use um, opaque pigments. So I would have to use either a white gel pen, which I like to do, or else gouache. Or even some white watercolor ground. Now I'm going to do some more textury stuff as well in a little bit. Oh, here's one other thing I should point out. People who have never used watercolor ground are sometimes taken by surprise with this, but the texture that it creates on your surface, on your paper, is very different from just the un- touched paper itself, or even just the watercolor painted paper. Um, when you use the watercolor ground, it is going to affect how pigment and liquid is absorbed by your paper. So you're not going to be able to get a seamless transition from an area that you have painted with ground to an area that you have not painted with. So it is not useful, for example, for fixing a mistake. If you make an error in a certain area and you wanna just cover it up with, with white watercolor ground so that you can reset the paper. It's, this is a common misconception that people think they can do with watercolor ground. It's not good for that because 
it will look very different both physical texture wise as well as how the paint sits. So I like to use watercolor ground for a variety of other techniques, not for correcting mistakes, but rather utilizing its properties for my own purposes and for reasons that vary from painting to painting. For example, in this one, I'm using it because I want to quickly build up the intensity of this blue and have it be a, a relatively smooth blue field. Other times I will use transparent watercolor ground on top of metallic stuff like gold leaf. I can actually set down gold leaf because you can, the watercolor ground basically turns any surface into something that is watercolorable. So I will sometimes set down my gold leaf and then cover everything with watercolor ground and then that lets me paint on top of it. And it's like you're painting directly onto the metal because it is for the most part transparent. That's a really cool use for it. I've also used it to paint directly onto actual metal. I've made little, I've made little um, miniature pendants with actual paintings, actual watercolor paintings in them. And all I had to do was prep my base with some watercolor around and then that let me paint onto them. I've had people ask, well, why don't you just do acrylic? Well, because I am a watercolor painter primarily. I have watercolors. I have watercolor pigments. And so why bother spending a whole lot of money buying acrylics when I can just accomplish my goals with some judicious use of watercolor ground. All right, I think I've gotten this blue to the darkness that I would like it to be. I'm gonna leave things be for a little while, letting that part dry. 